Canada's putting up another $227 million over four years to help build democracy in Afghanistan. It's all part of a $16 billion global commitment coming out of a weekend conference that took place in Tokyo, Japan. Canada's share is supposed to target promoting equality for women. But it does come amidst reports an Afghan woman was executed by repeated gunshots to the head for alleged crime having an adulterous relationship. We're going to show you some controversial video in a minute, and we'll give you a warning on it about that execution. But it raises some troubling questions. After more than a decade of military and development aid, we've already poured in $16 billion to Afghanistan. How far has that country really come? Is corruption a factor here? Let's bring some MPs in on that debate. We'll also talk about Syria. In Calgary, Deepak O'Brien is here. He's the Parliamentary Secretary to the uh, Foreign Affairs Minister. In Toronto, Defence Procurement Critic uh, Matthew Calway is here. And in Moncton, the Foreign Affairs uh, Critic Don LeBlanc is here. Uh, gentlemen, good to see all of you. Uh, let's start with you, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, what kind of guarantees is Canada demanding from the Afghan government, given the fact, and you had Chris Alexander saying, uh, there's so much corruption in that government. How much... Uh, you know, commitment do we have to know that this $500 million is actually not going to get siphoned off uh, to corruption? Well, accountability is one of the key elements that we as the donors are demanding. But before I go there, let me say in the strongest term that the government of Canada condemns that killing by the Taliban of these women. The women's rights are a key element of our foreign aid policy, in that, uh, our de development policy in that country. The $225 million that we have said is earmarked for human rights, for helping women go to school and to swear that there's no abuse for women. Therefore, let me be very clear about that uh, execution about these women. Now, of course, yes, we are well aware of the fact, and there's no point in hiding it under the carpet, that there is a corruption going on in that part of the country. Time after time, things do come out to show that there is corruption taking place. However, our responsibility, the way we are going to handle these funds, the way we're going to, is that accountability must be there. But how, the how do you do it? Fifty percent of the money that the world is committing will be funneled through the Karzai government. They already funneled, uh, deal with $2 billion. There's already lots of allegations of corruption in the Karzai government. They've $16 billion has already gone into that country. And to be honest, a lot of people wonder what the, if it's been effectively used. So what, how do you actually track that money? Actually, uh, while well, we do put in places for accountability, that's how all these uh, these uh, are, uh, these stories are coming out because of the accountability factor. But let me we say in no uncertain terms that we hold the government of Mr. Karzai uh, accountable for all that thing here, and we are calling on him to ensure that all of those accountability processes are done. Now, if they are not done, we're going to ask for accountability, and we're going to make sure ensure ourselves uh, that we that the accountability process is there and the money does not. Disappear but okay, but the, the question is, what do you do? I mean, if it's not there, M Matthew Kelly, how, what happens if it, you know, we find out there is more corruption? I mean, it's very difficult to frankly track where the money's going. Yeah, Evan, let me let me start with with this that uh, you know we also obviously condemn uh, the shooting of of that woman in Afghanistan. The challenge here and the challenge that the conservative governments failed to meet is moving beyond condemnation. This is a government that only knows how to chide and admonish or respond militarily. And we know that so few conflicts in this world these days are actually amenable, even in very small part, with a military response. And so what this government needs to do is engage with the world uh, in uh, deeper, sincere diplomatic efforts. But what does that mean? Uh, I mean? I mean, here they are. The troops are gone, there's training missions, there's now another $227 million going to things like stopping the drug trade, there's uh, money earmarked for equality of women. What else do you think should happen here? Well, the challenge here, Evan, is that uh, this government is committed to the construction of an enormous security force in Afghanistan. We've gotten ourselves into a, into a position by following this military response into building a security force that simply isn't sustainable. I mean, that security force, as it stands now, the construction of it is 90 percent funded by the United States. We have a country here in Afghanistan uh, w that spends about $54 billion a year but takes in less than $2 billion in revenue. There is an enormous problem there. 
And most of these funds are going to support uh, this enormous security force of almost 400,000 uh, armed forces, including uh, police. But the and question is, oh, I mean, I mean uh, let me bring in Dominic LeBlanc kidding. to this, Dominic LeBlanc. But the question is, uh, when you've got st still a very active Taliban, uh, I mean, you've got still uh, bombs going off, six U.S. soldiers killed again in, a, in an explosive attack. I mean, can you do it without a huge uh, security force in Afghanistan? Uh, well, Evan, I mean, uh, Canada has, I think, taken uh, a very constructive role in helping to train uh, this huge security force. I don't think anybody should doubt that the security needs of the Afghan uh, people are probably amongst the most difficult in the world. Uh, the Afghan military was starting from a, a base in terms of training and equipment and the rule of law and a and a functioning uh, command structure at basically zero. So, and the same thing would apply, I'm sure, to the civilian police forces. So Canada should and has done a, a, a lot there. But, Evan, it's by no means simple. I mean, this, this horrible shooting of this Afghan woman uh, tells us that we're far from over the finish line in terms of defeating uh, Taliban uh, attacks that, that, that hurt and, and kill not only foreigners who are serving there, including aid workers, civilians, but Afghan people at an alarming rate. We've been saying for a long time, Evan, that the Conservatives um, should see that the military mission was coming to an end, and we should have been much more proactive and ahead of the curve in offering um, democracy and capacity building, um, financing and, and Canadian NGOs that have a long-standing and I think rather successful track record of helping countries, uh, including some almost almost as as uh, as demolished as Afghanistan is and was. Um, we think that the government's come a bit late to the party. We're glad that they're finally uh, stepping up with some aid money. I share your view, Evan, that uh, corruption and accountability has to be uh, at the forefront of this. It's it's far from clear that uh, the Karzai government. Uh, is going to be able to deliver all this money effectively. And if they can't, then we should look at other ways to well, deliver it. I mean, let me, you've all talked about this. And we had a great debate here at this, at our department, uh, whether to show this video. Now, we're going to show you this video that has circulated. We've edited it out. Uh, what you will see is uh, the back of this 22 year old woman. Uh, she's accused of adultery. It's been circulating. And let me show you. I warned some of our viewers they may find this dis disturbing. Let's just listen in to what, what you're seeing here. We've edited that out. Um, what, you re what was there was nine shots. Allegedly, her husband, this woman accused of adultery, uh, they read passages from the Koran, the Taliban, they cheer, then they, there's nine gunshots, and this woman is killed. Now, we debated whether to show this. The reason we are is this is what's happening, and, and how else do we acknowledge uh, and wake up to the fact that this is still happening? This is two hours outside of Kabul. Uh, Mr. O'Brien, and you got to wonder after billions of dollars and more aid, uh, and, and there's elections next year, Karzai will be up. Uh, I mean, is Afghanistan, is it a lost cause? Do we give up on the country? Or do we stay in because that is what is still out there? What, I mean, how do we, how do we gauge whether, where to put our, our support, our dollars, our, our blood and treasure here? Uh, as I said, we strongly condemn this killing here that's just taken place and you know it's very disturbing I agree with that but this is exactly why we need to be in Afghanistan no matter look Afghanistan started from ground zero and we are building a country the security forces our own soldiers have laid their lives because they believed in the rule of law they believed in justice for women that's why Canadian soldiers put their life down we need we owe it to them we owe it to the people of Afghanistan to this woman who was executed to all the ones over there that we stay in that country we build the forces we build but the, we're the not staying state. to be fair we're giving money but we're basically out I mean no, then some, some might wonder did the job get done when that still no. happened we have 900 of our people, policemen, out there training the Afghana. We are working with the international community to carry on to bring that thing out there. We cannot abandon Afghanistan. That's what the Prime Minister but said. I, I, and I, I guess, but is this commitment enough, Mr. Kelway? 
No, it's not, Evan, and, and that's the kind of simplistic response uh, that this government uh, has. Uh, the, the issue is that the current path we're on is unsustainable. The amount of money that's been gathered through the Tokyo conference for aid for Afghanistan is not enough. It's 16 billion, but one has to look at the uh, amount of resources that are going into that country uh, to keep it going. It's been evident for a long, long time that this path of a military solution is not sustainable. But how do you realize. have how do you have the, rights the without security, Mr. But Kilway. the amount, but the amount. Of, well, one has to go back and start again, Evan, because the amount well, of aid, the Taliban. amount of aid that has gone into that country is a fraction of the amount of military resources that have gone into that country, and we cannot continue to support a security force with the kind of money we have because there's going to be nothing left over for building mm -hmm. civil society and doing something for uh, girls and, and women in Afghanistan. There's going to be no money left over for infrastructure. And so we need to work with the international community and rethink how we approach this. But we are still committed to a military response and there is just the aid that is going into that country is just a bit of icing on a cake. Uh, Dominic LeBlanc, I mean, this is the question. So is, given the Taliban's evident strength, and this video is a reminder, and uh, by the way, the people on Twitter who are debating us, yes, there's, of course, executions of men. There's execution of women. I mean, this stuff is still going on. There's corruption. Given that, is the current commitment, the $16 billion from the world, is this the, is this the right path? Is it sustainable? It's certainly part of the solution, Evan, if the, if the world community, if major international players came together as they did and decided to support the Afghan people uh, in trying to build a, a country from, from ground zero, literally, then that's a good thing. Uh, is that alone the solution? No. Uh, I disagree with Matthew a bit. They continually obsess about the military aspect of this. Um, I think that the military had a role to play. I was in favor of scaling down our commitment, which has been enormous, and Canadians have lost their lives in this very difficult circumstance. So uh, we thought the government should have been ahead of the curve. And you know, this government, Evan, is, is cutting the budgets at CEDA. Uh, the minister, of course, resigned in disgrace a, a few weeks ago. Um, the idea that, that international cooperation and international development under this government has, A, been taken seriously or has fit into a, a, a framework of policy that's consistent is wrong. It's sort of a slap-happy exercise designed often for domestic politics uh, or to support certain sectors of the Canadian economy in corporate social responsibility abroad. So we think that they should have been ahead of this curve and worked with other allies in recognizing that this is a long road ahead of us. Well, the road will continue. Uh, I've run short of time, and, and we were going to get to Syria and whether um, Kofi Annan, in an attempt to get another peace deal out of uh, the Assad regime, is being conned. Uh, I, I got about 10 seconds here. Deepak Obrey, Matthew Kelway, on a yes or no, is, do you have any faith that Annan has a potential for a peace plan, just yes or no, or, or, or is this really just a, a, a ploy by the Assad regime, Mr. Obrey? Well, we'll wait and see. Uh, the record of, of Mr. Assad has not been very good, so we're going to wait and see what is the outcome of what Mr. Kofi Annan has been saying. Matthew Kelly, Dominic LeBlanc, is he getting conned? Well, well, wouldn't it be nice to have a seat on the Security Council, Evan, uh, to have a, have a voice in the room to try and deal with this issue? Uh, we don't have that voice in the room, and that's thanks to the Conservatives' uh, foreign affairs All right, policy. I know you didn't answer my question on that one, but I'm going to go ahead. Just for time purposes, Don LeBlanc. Mr. LeBlanc, what do you think? Is the Co do you have any faith Kofi Annan's got a deal here? Uh, look, look I, I have faith that if anybody can find a solution, it's Mr. Anand. The fact that he's going to Tehran, which, by the way, has a human rights record as appalling as some of these elements in Afghanistan, I think is important. So we should do whatever we can to support Mr. Anand. I, I think the problem may be Mr. Assad, uh, but Mr. Anand certainly deserves our support. If he believes he's getting close to something, then God, let's, let's hope he's right. Well, um, I, ho I wish we had more than hope on this. Uh, Deepak Obra, Matthew Kelly, Dominic LeBlanc, appreciate your time. Uh, lots on the plate. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks, Thank everyone. You.